when it comes to the Indian automotive market, the Renault Duster was a very important product, especially for two reasons. First, it was one of the first products that made unibody, you know, monocoque bodied SUVs extremely popular in India. This was an SUV that became instantly popular, especially in urban centers, especially with female drivers. It was great to drive. It felt car-like, had fantastic ride and handling. But I think the bigger contribution that the Duster made was that it established the Renault brand in India very well. It was a runaway success when it was launched, but that's been quite a few years now. The Duster now has a lot of competition. When it was originally launched, it had no competition. It was sold in pretty good volumes. In today's market, the scenario is very different. Now, Renault has given a new heart to the Duster. It's given it new touches, but in this intensely competitive SUV market today, with a new engine, with some styling changes, with some more equipment, is the Duster still an SUV you would like to own? We drive the new 1.3 litre turbo petrol Duster today to find out and answer all your questions about it. When it comes to design and styling, the French brands have always had an upper hand to most other companies. Renault is no different. The Duster when it was launched was a pretty handsome looking machine. I still think these inflated arches, both front and rear, still are a design sort of touch that are very distinctive, hardly ever replicated and still make the Duster stand out very well. In the new version, Renault has given it a little bit of, you know, as they say, lipstick and polish to make the Duster look a little more attractive. You get a lot more chrome here. You get these more detailed headlights with projector headlamps, LED daytime running lamps. You also get these lots of nice red touches on the grille, around the fog lamp housing, on the details on the wheel centers, on the badging on top of the roof rails. So all that has been enhanced. I quite like this bright blue color on this lovely sunny day in Delhi in this green area. That blue really stands out. But yeah, I think the Duster still is a handsome product. It's not a sort of a really beautiful looking car, but it's something that does the purpose. It looks butch, it looks quite purposeful, and it's a design that has aged very, very well. When we come to the rear, again, Renault's made these incremental changes to the Duster. You get these LED tail lights. The chrome that was here on the rear badging has been taken away. Now you get red lettering for it. You also get a turbo badge which tells you that this is not the usual 1.5 litre K9K diesel engine, but the new 1.3 litre petrol. But the biggest thing is with a 150 plus horsepower engine, which is the most powerful engine in its class, does the Duster really stand up to its rivals? Let's find out. Now the Duster has been in the Indian market for over eight years. It was launched in 2012. And while the exterior has held up quite well design wise, I'm afraid I can't say the same about the interior. The interior is beginning to really show its age. You know, you can see that. There are hard plastics all around, which are not very nice to touch. The seven screen touch screen, well, one, it's small. Two, this is something, this is a problem I've had with dusters earlier also. The reflection, the sunlight on it makes it very difficult to use. And it's also positioned not so ergonomically. The climate control, of course, works well. In the new version, you also get automatic start stop, which actually works quite well. But compared to its rivals, the interior looks stark. It doesn't have the same feeling of plushness. The good parts about the interior, yes, there's a lot of space. The front seats are quite comfortable. I like this new fabric pattern and design that Renault's given this brown with this blue detailing and these sort of graphics here. The steering, the new steering is also quite nice. So from that perspective, it does have space. It does feel fairly comfortable, but the quality doesn't stand up to the competition anymore. And it's also lacking on the features list. What it does get at standard though is dual airbags, ABS, EBD, like I said, automatic start stop, you get climate control, you get the seven inch touchscreen, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. So all the basics are there, but it's not really loaded to the gills like some of its competition is. But there's another factor there, which is the price, which I'll come to after I'm done driving the Duster to give you an update on how the Duster drives and how much effect on its driving abilities, on its overall balance has the new engine and the added power had. One interesting aspect of when I tell you about the Duster and how it has evolved over the years is that I personally have spent a lot of time driving Dusters. Thanks to Renault India, I had multiple long-term Dusters 
So I started driving 110 PS diesel six-speed manual, which then switched to the 110 PS diesel all-wheel drive version. And then for a while, I also had the diesel AMT. In total, I think I spent well over a year with the Duster. So I'm very familiar with the positives, the negatives, the flaws, the qualities of the SUV. When it comes to the new Duster, I think the first thing that really strikes you is the fact that when you sit inside the car, the interiors, that's when you begin to realize that this is a car that was launched about eight years ago in 2012. And you can tell there are lots of hard plastics inside uh, the Duster. It feels a little low rent compared to its current competition, but there are quite a few advantages too such as that there's a decent amount of space, headroom, shoulder loom, legroom uh, available inside the Duster. It also retains its fantastic ride quality. You know, the Duster for the longest time has been one of the best riding uh, sort of SUVs or even vehicles that are available in India. The suspension on the Duster, whether it comes to high speed stability or the ride quality has been simply fantastic. Now, when I had the multiple dusters on long term, I still remember distinctly, and you can find that out if you go through my old long term reports, is that I always said, you know, the chassis of the duster feels so capable. I think it can handle another 15, 20 BHP with ease. Well, my prayers have been answered with the new 1.3 litre turbo petrol engine. And I just wanted 15, 20 odd BHP. This has got an almost 50 BHP increase. Now, this 153 BHP engine, 1.3 litres turbocharged, is a fantastic unit you know you press the throttle like i'm in fourth gear now on the highway i'm doing 35 press the throttle and it absolutely starts flying the engine response is terrific it delivers power in a very linear way and it makes the duster a phenomenally fun car to drive the duster is always a fun car to drive but this added power really kicks it up a few notches but it also exaggerates one problem of the duster uh, you see, one of my pet hates of whoever else has driven the Duster also shares that feeling with me, is the steering kickback. For some reason, I think it's the suspension geometry or maybe the steering geometry, this platform, whether it's the Renault Duster, whether it's the Nissan Terrano, if you're sort of taking a curve and you hit a bump, the steering really fights you back. Uh, and that can be really annoying on long journeys, especially if you're in the mountains and trying to sort of get a move on. And that used to be a pet hate. And with the new engine, with the amount of power it has, with the amount of pace you can carry, and if you're driving on bad roads, that steering kickback can become a really fighting aspect. And that can be serious enough that it can be a make or break aspect about the duster for certain people. But overall, with the extra power, it has really become a pocket rocket. The duster can be really thrown around. That suspension really helps you out. And you know, powering out of corners or maintaining high speeds on the highways with this new engine is absolutely fantastic. And that really makes the Duster a better driver's car. One more thing, like I said about the interiors, yes, it's a bit uh, low rent. Yes, the uh, you know, touchscreen entertainment system is still mounted in a way where direct sunlight really washes it out. But certain aspects of the Duster still work really well, such as the air conditioning, which is absolutely brilliant. Suspension I discussed, you can take it on really long drives. It's got a pretty decent sized boot. And I think a lot of the quality or lot of the sort of outdated aspect of the Duster is taken care of by the fact that it's priced at a really stellar level. So the entry level 1.3 turbo Duster will cost you just under 10.5 lakh rupees X showroom, while the top model will cost you just under 12. And you know, when you compare it to a Hyundai Creta or a Kia Seltos, yes, the dust is nowhere on the equipment uh, challenge or the quality challenge, but priced four, five, six lakh rupees cheaper than both those, the duster still makes a great case for itself. If you're looking for a practical, reliable, great riding SUV that is also very fun to drive, you should definitely look at the duster in the 1.3 turbo trim. Only thing being, before you put your money down, be aware of that steering kickback. If you can live with that, the duster makes a very, very strong case for itself.